Chris Ockley, uh, Missouri track fanatic and running junkie here at the 2014 uh, Missouri Track Cross Country Coach Association Clinic with uh, Stacy Dravila. And, um, uh, had a great, great uh, session tonight. We're going to do a little bit more tomorrow, but um, former, uh, what, what, four straight weird years, I guess you were at the top of the world and uh, with world championships and then they, uh, in the pole vault and the gold medal in Sydney and, um, and doing some coaching now. Tell me, what was your favorite memory of, of, of competing? Or t take me back to, to Sydney and what, um, what was the most memorable thing about Sydney and winning that gold and being kind of a, a uh, trailblazer in the sport? Yeah, um, it was an amazing experience to be a part of the Olympics. I remember being out on the warm-up field one day with so many great athletes out there, and I was warming up and stretching and <clears throat> just kind of seeing everybody that I've seen on TV before. And sure. I'm up close and personal, and then, you know, it hits me like, hey, I'm at the Olympics too, and I got to do my thing. And so it was, it was a super great honor, and, you know, to come out and win the, the games, <clears throat> Uh, it was a dream come true. I started pole vaulting when I was 23. Never thought that I would ever, ever compete at that level. Right. And then to come out with the gold medal, it was beside myself. So um, I told people tonight that a lot of people didn't think the women's pole vault would take off or sure. last. And, um, and I kind of attribute my success to those people that doubted us, the meet officials or the meet organizers in Europe that didn't believe that the women's pole vault would last. Yeah. Those guys fueled my fire to, to right. keep pushing, and so thank right. you. <laughs> <clears throat> and after after uh, retirement, how long did it take for you to know that you wanted to stay involved in the sport and uh, do working with your camp and your, your club now and, and working with athletes? How long did that take? It did took like a second. Oh, okay. um, you know, I went to school to be an educator and. I didn't really want to go back into a classroom, so I thought my classroom could be the track. Sure. And I'm so excited to uh, to have started that. I started right right as soon as I retired in 2009. Okay. I started coaching, having a club down in San Diego. Now I'm up in Boise, Idaho, and been running a club there. And I also do three camps during the summer, and we're hoping to get another one launched this summer. Okay. Uh, location still to be announced. Okay. Maybe East Coast, North, or East Coast, South. Okay. So just just a place where I feel feel like there needs to be a camp and yeah. we're a place where the pole vault's not doing well can we create interest because we don't want the pole vault to be eliminated and we, we love the pole vault I have obviously a fond memory of it and sure. passion for it that I want it to continue to grow I want it to be safe and I want it to flourish right. and what's the name of your your club again I um it's Altius TC okay. it's Al Al Altius means higher yeah. and track crew or track club so we, we kind of play around with the name yeah yeah and uh <clears throat> what have you found the uh the coaching aspect of it um just as uh rewarding as the, the successful competition in an athletic career i do it's fun to plan kids workouts especially when i really have to get to tailor a workout to a kid that that wants that you know opportunity when i was working in san diego i had smaller groups so i was able to really tailor a workout specifically for that person, have yeah. specific drills, specific goals for that person. Now I'm in a bigger setting, but we still have specific goals for athletes. It's harder to tailor things, but sure. we, we do, you know, as best we can. We videotape every practice. I'm able to send video back to the kids so they can look at it and study it and analyze it. Yeah. And I try to write some notes of what I think needs to be worked on. So that's really fun for me. and. Uh, it's just fun to get a bunch of kids out there. It's great to get new kids that have never tried the pole vault right. and work with kids. Because I remember those first couple days of when I started a pole vault and the craziness of it and the fear and the daredevilness of it. And then once the kid really kind of takes it and owns it, that's where it's so fun and rewarding that you know we we brought so many in and, and they're gonna they're gonna invest in time, invest sure. in time with it. I, I, I assume that you've got to be especially proud of your, your athletic career, especially since you came to the pole vaulting so late in life. Uh, is, that, is that pretty rewarding to look back, that you had so much success and you were so late to the game compared to kids now? It is. It's, it's, it's great to have that story because I go and tell kids, I was 23 when I started pole vaulting, so don't think your career's over when you're 16 or 17 or 18. Right. You're just so new, still trying to learn so much that just give yourself some time. The pole vault is such a technical event that it takes time to understand how things work and sure. the timing of it and as long as you can play and have fun with it and uh, that's where you're going to really grow and trust in a coach have, have a system that's in place 
those building blocks that are necess that are necessity to grow sure. are huge. So that's that's what I tell kids is that the sky's the limit and don't ever put a number or a day or a time or a year on it. You never know, you know, unless you really get out there and try. Sure, sure. <clears throat> but you it sounds like you, you pretty much embrace the, the role of pole vault ambassador and trying to keep it alive in some states and, and improving it in some states and making sure as many people have the opportunity to vault that are possible? We are, you know, um, I'll do as, as much as I can. I have so many great people behind me, clinicians that I've had at my camps that we brainstorm all the time, we get together, and it's just fun to get those kind of spirits behind you. And sure. I guess everybody knows my face, so it's natural for me to get up and speak about it, but there's some great people that, you know, do all the hard work behind the scenes, the numbers, the stats, to really find sure. where our weaknesses are. and. Those people I have to give credit to because it's it's them that's a really pushing force, and I just get to stand up on a podium and and verbalize it to everybody. Sure. But what a what a great opportunity to to help grow the sport and bring awareness to it, and bring kids back into it. Do you miss? Do you vault at all still anymore? I do a little bit. I, okay. I drill some, and then when I get to coach coaching camps, it's fun to do more drills because. Sure. Um, and I get to work with kind of that elite group of kids and try to add on new drills that they haven't done or skill sets. Yeah. And so I try to stay in shape, but, you know, I'm getting older. <laughs> well, what's your favorite part of, uh, um, or what's the, I'm sorry, what's, what do you miss most about being at an elite competitive level and competitions and what, what do you miss the most? Just the competitiveness, being out there on the field, going head to head with somebody. I, I loved it. I think that. I, I love competing against the best because I felt they brought the best out in me. And sure. to, to not have that anymore, you know, I know we all have to move on, but I really enjoyed being a competitor and being on the field going going to battle. Yeah. And the training. It, it, the pole vault brings so many different aspects of training. Sure. And we're very dynamic and diverse with our training. I did a lot of hurdle training, long jump training, heptathlon training. And I think it gave me a well-rounded background that didn't make me sick of the pole vault. Or when I had a bad day in the pole vault, I could go do the hurdles, the high jump, the long jump, the shot. The I had tons of things I could right. play with. And, and it always made me a better athlete. So yeah. I was very blessed. Uh, and finally, what, 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 I, it seems like I've noticed that the vaulters and the uh, multi-eventers have this amazing camaraderie where they support and they, they get the least amount of attention for what they do and there's a special bond where they cheer for each other and lift each other up and pee each other. Uh, explain, talk to me about a little bit about that. Yeah, when you're out on the field for three, four, five hours at a time with somebody, it's it's hard to have that angry face all the time. Yeah. You know, and like for me, like I said, I, I like, I cheer people on to jump well because I thought if they jump well, then I'm going to get out there and jump even better or try my best to do that. Right. In the multi, kind of the same thing. You're out there kind of against yourself, except, you know, maybe in the hurdles. You're throwing the implements, trying to you know, throw as far as you can, but it's not that that 100 meter where you're just like all out for 10 seconds, 11 right. seconds, and you're done. You kind of have to play an even field because you're out there for a long, long time. And I've been in some amazing long competitions and been able to come out on top, but they're tough, tough competitions. Yeah. What's the longest, do you remember? <clears throat> Six hours, maybe, five Probably hours? Probably five, five and a half hours. And that's just because I remember at World Championships a couple times, we'd be in the middle of our competition, but we'd have to stop every time someone right. would yeah. get a, a medal oh. or a starting starting block. Sure. You know, we want to pay respect to the person that's getting a medal. Right. Even though you're in the middle of your game, you got to just, you got to right. take a break, refocus. And so that plays a lot on your mental state of yeah. how to stay in it for that long. And then if the elements are excruciating hot and humid, it's just, yeah. you got to be a fighter out there. Well, what's your favorite favorite moment or memory from, from your career? Is it letting go of that pole and clearing the, the bar in Sydney to, to fall back to the mat and winning, knowing that you'd won? Or what, any other favorite moments you have in the sport? I think that, and I think, gosh, uh, you know, I talked about winning. Not meeting your husband, that's probably way Yeah, meeting my husband. I met him in Finland on a world championship team. I never thought that I would meet my husband, right. the man of my dreams, in Finland. <laughs> <laughs> and I have two beautiful young daughters that are amazing, and who knows what they're going to do sure. as long as they're happy and healthy. Yeah. Just be supportive parents. Yeah. Anything else, though? Any other memory with this I'm sport? good, yeah. All I'm right. good. <laughs> well, I'm sure appreciate the time, and uh, uh, keep up the good work, and hopefully the pole vault will... Uh, 
and it'll continue to grow and uh, thrive in places where it hasn't before. We will. We'll get it back on the map. Cobalt right. Strong Nation. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.